Hello guys, my name is Ibuku and welcome back to Alba and Ibuku TV. Yay! The reception on the last video I posted, which was um, the win of Fatia in Kuma. Guys, the feedback on that video, I was so overwhelmed and I'm really thankful for everyone that watched, liked, commented and shared with their friends. It means so much to me. So guys, if you still haven't watched that video, I'm still going to link it below so you, you won't be left out. Guys, when I say that story has all the gist. All the gist you need in your lifetime it's in that story so that brings us to our story of this week guys this story is a little bit sad uh it's just so today we're going to be talking about sarah batman now sarah batman is just like the typical example of how black women have been exploited how we've suffered and the white obsession and commodification of the black female exotic body i know uh, guys this video is just uh, let me just get into it it's going to be a lot i've already drawn my brow so i'm going to go straight to my eye look to start the story we'd have to go to 1994. nelson mandela has been declared the president of south africa so of all the things nelson mandela has to fix in this country he sent a letter. I don't know if he sent a letter, but all I know is he sent correspondence to France to request the repatriation of an African woman's remains. He has to send a letter to France that, yo, you guys need to send this dead body back to Africa so that we bury her. He sent it request in 1994. They finally agreed to sending the body back in 2002. Guys, my math is bad, but we have to from 1994. 95 guys that's like eight years eight years after he makes the request that is when they finally decide to send the body back so i know you might be wondering how did this body end up in france and why is nelson mandela writing a letter what no it can't be an email probably a letter what is happening in this world? They would have to go back to 1789. So guys, we are in 1789, where a young woman is born. Now she's born as um, Sehura. I don't know if I, you know guys, you know over here, we butcher names over here. In a South African village, her tribe was Koi Koi, which is like an indigenous south african group but when she was two her mother died which is really sad in her adolescent years her dad was killed by cattle raiders her dad was a, a cattle driver um, after her dad dies she finally decides that oh she's going to settle down and probably fall in love and have a family <laughs> but life had different plans for her so at 16 she married another koi koi man he's a drummer so she married him and then she had a baby for him but the baby died from birth her husband is killed by dutch colonialists you could see like this woman is like there's no happiness for her in the world Every, everything that she loves is, is being killed it's, it's really sad sehura doesn't have a father she doesn't have a mother she doesn't have a husband she doesn't have a child you can imagine how like things <laughs> Things seems really really bad for her this is a time where um the dutch have colonized south africa and they want to expand they want to expand their territory so sarah is caught and sold to a trader called pitts william caesar who takes her from koi koi where she's where she was born to cape town and then he gives her as a slave to his brother hendrick caesar so here sehura is a domestic a domestic slave domestic slaves don't work on the fields they work in the house inside the houses of their masters so guys before we go any further it's important that now we'll talk about the body structure of sehura so she has a condition called i don't know if it's a condition but they said it's called titopedia so that is like a, just a genetic characteristics where a large substantial amount of fat is moved into your buttocks and your thighs. So this woman was thick, proper, 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 proper thick. 
So now that Sehura is in, she's in captivity, they had to change her name. Now she's no more called Sehura, she's now called um, Sa, Sajia, which is like a Dutch diminutive for Sarah. So this guy, her master Hendrik, has a friend who is a, a ship surgeon and his name is William Dunlop. So William Dunlop and Hendrik now made a plan to take Sarah from South Africa to England because in her her, her bottles were out of this world it was unnatural and um, they convinced her to sign a contract that says that when she goes to uh, england she'll have money she'll have wealth and fame and after some time they'll bring her back to south africa and a woman that can't read and write somehow she signed this contract <laughs> the audacity i also believe that um the Caesars were in some kind of financial troubles, so the reason why they took her to England was to get some money. Sarah, William, and Hendrik are now in England, and then they take Sarah to um, Picard London Piccadilly Circus, where she is displayed as unnatural, how she's out of this world how she's not normal look at her large eyes just look at her and people can pay one shilling to see her now she is dressed in very skin tight clothes nude she's dressed in nude clothes so it looks like her skin they put feathers around her put beads around her because that's how africans dress apparently so they now put a pipe in her mouth it's just ugh. we know that um, sarah is being advertised as a freak in in circus people are coming to watch her people are coming to watch her walk around people are coming to watch her dance it's just really sad sarah came to london in 1810 but in 1807 um slave trade was abolished but then slavery was still ongoing so it's like even though they said no don't have slaves but on the background people had like domestic slaves so black people were still slaves working like in homes of yeah, masters and that's the kind of background which Sarah Batman came to to London. A slave abolitionist now heard about the Sarah Batman situation because they didn't know the background. They didn't know the condition she was living in. They didn't know if she had really signed the contract to be used like that. Like they are wondering what's going on. Now takes um Hendrik and William to court because they see what they are doing as a form of slavery and they don't know if they have her consent to do all that and somehow somehow miraculously the contract that apparently this woman signed shows up and then they say oh we have proof she knows what she's doing and then they ruled in their favor but however the court now gives them a warning that um, they should give her warm clothes they should make sure she's properly dressed they should give her they should pay her higher wages and they're like okay cool we're gonna do all that did they do all that <laughs> would you be here if they did <laughs> now it's been it's been some time people are like okay fine we've seen this there's nothing there's nothing special about this woman again now she's just she's ordinary we've seen it so many times so they decide that okay they should take her to france because there's a whole new market there and more people can see this see this Pessimist. now it's important to know like the differences like the way they exhibited her so in english she was kind of like odd so like a freak of nature something strange and then when she was in in france when she was in paris it's now it seemed like she's like a sexual object now they don't see her as a human being they see her as a sex being so in france she sold to a animal handler called rex I can't I can't pronounce the name. As in Paris, things are not things are not great for Sarah. Now Sarah is being forced to perform. She's been put to a cage. She's been put beside animals. She's been taught to do tricks by this animal handler. When she refuses to do something, they beat her, they starve her. It was just I mean, she really went through it. So she's forced to perform from eleven AM to ten PM. Okay. And then in the evening you think oh she's going to rest but no now people would hire to have sarah appear at their private events so where she would come and just be among people and it's even believed that she was probably prostituted here people would pay to have sex with her example my lashes 
and I'll be back. So it's in Paris when Sarah now catches the attention of this guy. Now this guy's name is um, George Cuvier. Now George is a naturalist, so he is looking for the missing link between human beings and apes. And he believes that um, Sarah is that missing link. <laughs> she, this is where they said she resorted to heavy drinking, so she became an alcoholic. And come on, like it's easy. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't be an alcoholic under these circumstances? Like. Even thinking about this is making me <laughs> making me want to turn to alcohol. How much more someone that was actually living this experience day to day? Wild well, times. Sadly, um, Sarah passed away in 1815. It's her cause of death is not exactly known. It's like a, a mix of things. Some people say it's pneumonia. Some people say it's syphilis. Some people say it's alcoholism. Some people say it's smallpox. But then the woman. The woman had gone through a lot thinking that oh she's passed away and then she can finally have some freedom that's what you thought <laughs> this george cuvier guy this naturalist he sees this as the opportunity that he's been waiting for and he can prop properly steady he can properly steady this woman so right before he dissects her he makes a plaster cast of her body he takes out her brains he preserves her skeleton i don't know why i said skeleton like that but he preserves her skeleton and then he puts her brains and her genital in a jar and he can now study if she's indeed the missing link between human beings and apes Oof. that's a lot So I know you're probably wondering, does this story get any more worse? Well, it does. So he takes her skeleton and then her private organs, which they have stored in a jar and a plaster cast, and then they display it in the Paris Museum of Man. So there it was until 1994 when Nelson Mandela now requested that they repatriates those her body back and all her privates everything back to south africa so that she is buried why did it take the the french government so long to return her body now it said that during that time the french government was now also preparing a legal document to prevent other people from coming you know they stole from us right like let's just say that like they stole from us they took things from us so now they are thinking hmm if nelson mandela can come and claim the body of so so and so other African countries cannot come and claim the things that we took from them. So they now had to prepare like a contract to prevent us from coming to claim the things they stole from us. <laughs> ah, Lord. Finally, after they have prepared the contract to satisfaction, in 2002, they finally sent Sarah's remains back to South Africa to be buried. August 9, 2002, which is the Women's Day in South Africa, um, Sarah's body remains were buried in at it said Hanky, which is believed to be close to where she is born, and there she lays to rest. Okay, guys, I'm going to put on my lip and then we'll just talk because we have to unpack. I know this story, ah, this story has been a lot. Okay, guys, so this is the finished look. Now it's time for us to unpack. I know that story was quite heavy. But why is this Sarah Batman story really important to me? Um, I think it's because one, it shows how far exploitation can go, especially exploitation of women and how women really don't have agency over our bodies. Even, even as she died, people still find a way to exploit her and profit from her body, which is like really, really sick. This story has... Uh, uh, okay. All right, guys, so if you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. And also, please like, subscribe, and comment. It helps, it helps our channel grow. So let me know how this story has impacted you and what you have taken away from this video. Because I know I know this story has definitely not been an easy one. And if you still haven't watched The Winner of Fata and Kuma, you can just watch it. It's right here. Or here, I don't know. It's going to be somewhere here. But guys, watch it. Trust me. That, that should liven up your mood 
so guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon bye sahia so slave abolini abolitionist abolitionist slave abolini abolitionist abolitionist